This is the Royal Kludge RK61. I've been using it for a few months now, and I like it, but I feel like it has a lot more potential. All right. Let's go over what we need for this. First up is the keycaps. I went with these gray and white floral ones from Amazon and they costed around 35 bucks. Next up are the switches. I decided to go with two packs of the Titan Heart switches from High Ground, which costed around 70 bucks. I've got some painter's tape for the back of the PCB that I got from Walmart for like two bucks. A switch sound dampener for in between the PCB and the plate, which was from Amazon for like $9. A small magnetic screwdriver that I just had laying around. A keycap and switch puller that I got with the keyboard. And lastly, some white EVA foam for the inside of the case. That was about $15. Alright, so first thing I had to do was to take off all the already existing keycaps. After doing that, I had to take out all the switches. When I bought the RK61, I got to choose between red, brown, and blue switches. This is my first mechanical keyboard, so I didn't really know the difference of them, but I did know that blue was really clicky. I don't not like blue switches, but I would much prefer a more thawky sounding keyboard, which is a big reason that I'm even doing this. Last thing we have to do before actually taking the keyboard apart is to take out the stabs, which I actually almost forgot to take out. There's a little lever on them that you have to push down and then push up. At first I was trying to use the keycap puller, and that didn't work. <laughs> After that, I unscrewed the four screws that were on the bottom of the keyboard. I then took off the case and unplugged the battery. After that, I got the EVM foam and cut it to size. This was actually kind of tough, weirdly. I had to make sure I cut holes over where the screws go in and make sure none of the foam was weirdly sticking up. If you're wondering, this foam is used to prevent the hollowness that some keyboards have. I can't really explain it, but it makes the keyboard sound better. I then unscrewed the PCB from the plate, separated them. because now it was time for the switch sound dampener. This was actually one of the hardest things to do because a lot of the switches were very slightly off. So I had to cut a lot of it off and by the end to make it all line up correctly, the lower half wasn't even connected to the top anymore, which made it impossible to actually use that lower part. Next, it was time for the tape mod. For this, I used two layers of masking tape that I got from Walmart. I probably should have got wider masking tape, but this is what I had, so I had to go with it. Thinking I was done with the PCB, I went to connect it to the plate. I then realized that I taped over the screw holes, so I had to cut those out. Now finally, I screwed the PCB into the plate and put it in the case. Now we're on to some of the final touches, putting the switches in. I've been planning on modding this keyboard for a while now, and since the start, these high ground switches have been on my radar. They sound and feel incredible, so make sure you stick around to the end of the video to hear the sound test.
Last thing to do is put the keycaps on. In my opinion, these keycaps look great and really match with the color scheme of my setup. If you're curious and want to buy them yourself, there's going to be a link in the description. for what you've all been waiting for, the sound comparison. So that's it. That is the end of this video. I really had a fun time doing this. It's a new experience for me and I'm really happy with the final product. If you got to this point, I'd really appreciate if you scrolled down and click the red subscribe button. And yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching.